Hello, it's Matthew Holt. As you can tell, I'm uh, in my uh, summer location up in uh, up in the wonders of uh, near Lake Tahoe in California. Uh, but we're not stopping the health the, the TACB uh, uh, spotlights. I have with me Torben Nielsen, a friend of mine who has done a lot of stuff in digital health and has a new gig, as you can tell by his uh, his his uh, nameplate behind him of Uptive Health. And we'll oh look, he even figured out where it was and pointed in the right direction. I'm in Tree Health. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's restore it uh, close enough. Uh, so, Torben, uh, welcome to TCV Spotlights. Um, let's start. Well, I met you a long time ago, back in the health to my, my health to my days, when you were at uh, at HealthSpark. Um, but you have been wandering in and out of startups, yeah. health plans, uh, 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 clinics. Give, give me a quick sort of bio of, of, of who who you've worked <laughs> for over the years. Uh. Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me, uh, Matthew. Uh, really looking forward uh, to this. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, you know, 20 years in healthcare on the payer side and on the provider side. Started out with uh, Cambia uh, Health Solutions, right? Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield up in uh, the Pacific uh, Northwest. Uh, headed up uh, some of their digital. Co-founded a health spark, as you mentioned, uh, and had a tremendous run with them, uh, you know, for the next uh, five years and then had an opportunity to join another uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, Primera. Uh, up in uh, Seattle uh, and uh, worked for them uh, for a number of years and uh, then actually made the jump uh, from the payer side over to uh, the provider side, uh, heading up uh, Zoom Care, which is an on-demand uh, healthcare platform based in uh, Portland, uh, Oregon. Uh, but um, when I joined uh, the company, they had 37 clinics um, and a virtual care capability via via a, an app that they had uh, created themselves. And over the next uh, two and a half years, we grew uh, from 39 clinics to uh, 65 plus uh, clinics. Uh, we entered two new states, Colorado and Idaho. And uh, by the time I left, uh, we were seeing 350,000 patients on a yearly basis and had grown uh, to the largest primary care, urgent care uh, operator in the Northwest. Uh, and so, if you think of uh, those, uh, you know, that experience, uh, you know, having a built software as a service, uh, software is selling into, uh, you know, payers uh, across uh, the nation, uh, and then uh, having run uh, clinics as well, uh, that's a really nice marriage uh, to what we do at the Optive Health. Fantastic. So Optive Health, <clears throat> let's start there. Uh, you are one of the CEOs recruited in by the folks at Redesign Health who've been building companies at a very rapid clip out of their base in, in New York City. I know uh, many of my uh, colleagues there, our old friend Missy Krasner from the Google Health Days and elsewhere, and many of us is now one of their venture partners. And they spin up new companies all the time. So, And then they go yeah. out and find uh, CEOs to go run them, and they found you. So you just yeah. came out of stealth. You just announced a $7.5 million round. You can tell me a bit about that. But before we get there, what does Optum Health do? Give me, the, uh, give me the, uh, the, the niche you're in and what you're trying to do. Yeah, so so Optive Health is a hybrid whole person infusion care platform. We set up a conveniently located infusion centers uh, close to where patients live. Uh, they're modern, uh, you know, centers. Uh, you walk in, uh, you get snacks and drinks, so you get your private suite, you get flash screen TV, uh, Wi-Fi enabled streaming services. Uh, so as you get your infusion, uh, you can stream Hulu or Netflix uh, or your favorite uh, streaming services or you can choose uh, to work. Uh, it's it's a very comfortable experience. Then we combine that with a virtual care capability uh, that allows uh, the patient uh, to have its or their own uh, patient app, uh, Optive Health uh, branded, uh, and uh, it allows them uh, to feel more in control of uh, the chronic healthcare journey that they're on. That is, in essence, uh, you know what uh, we do at Optive Health, and we can talk a lot more about the yeah. problems that we're addressing uh, here in a second. Yeah, well, well, let's do that. So let's. So, what is the current? So that the, my thing with infusion, I think, of sort of one thing is chemotherapy, and the other is all the drugs that sort of you know are in the Humira Remicade zone, aimed for yeah. you know people who who yeah. have all, all different kinds of conditions that that, that those yeah. there's a, usually yep. immune conditions, those drugs, to, um, Crohn's disease, other things like that. Um, so. Who are you aiming at first in all of that spectrum? And then what's their current experience that you're trying to improve, replace, make better? Yeah, so uh, to answer your question, uh, first question, uh, we stay away from oncology at this point in time. We do biologics, uh, and those are the diseases you mentioned, Crohn's disease, MS, um, 
uh, all, all of the autoimmune in, in, in essence uh, diseases, right? Uh, and the current experience, uh, you know, is, you know, for the most part, uh, infusion happens in hospitals or hospital outpatient uh, settings. Uh, it's very hard to find parking, as we all know. It's hard to even find where you're going to get the infusion uh, once you enter the, the hospital. Uh, once you actually find it, uh, typically it's a community setting, meaning there's probably uh, 20 other patients uh, getting the infusions. It's very hectic. It's noisy uh and there's very little uh, privacy right if you want to have a, a private conversation with your nurse uh it's very, very hard to, to have it uh, because you have patients all over you uh the experience uh, that we are trying to uh, create and and uh, the problems uh, that we see in infusion care is it's been very transactional uh it's very uh, you know, a hectic experience and it's very expensive because it happens in, uh, you know, hospital settings. So we are addressing uh, three problems. It's accessibility, it's affordability, and it's patient experience. And so we do that by setting up these conveniently located infusion centers. We're going to be open over the weekend. We're going to be open there late night. It's hard to fit healthcare into a nine to five schedule. And so therefore we are trying to, uh, you know, schedule around the patient's uh, schedule uh, or their uh, calendars uh, and really be there for them. And because we have, uh, you know, a, a virtual care platform as well, uh, we are gonna be there even when the patient leaves the clinic. We're gonna be available via chat or SMS. Uh, we're gonna be available via video consultation. Uh, and we're gonna add services that's going to help uh, the patient navigate a very complex chronic uh, healthcare journey. Uh, we will see the patient more often than they see their primary care doc or even uh, their specialist, right? They're going to come in on a very regular basis to get their medications. And uh, they're with us uh, for a number of hours. And therefore, we think there's an opportunity to actually sit down with them and ask them, what else is ailing you in your healthcare journey and how can we help? Now let's talk so, about uh, let's talk about cost for a second. Um, one of the thing one of the things that uh, you mentioned was affordability and the current cost in hospitals. I, I frequently have uh, my, uh, my, uh, my colleague Robin von Van Panien, whose name I can never pronounce, Robin Triple S. She comes on uh, the healthcare blog. She'll talk quite a bit about how she's on Remicade. I think she has yeah. uh, um, uh, some you know, massive gastro um, uh, yeah. intestinal uh, you know disease complications. Does Remicade? Yeah. I think once every two weeks, once a month, and it used to do it at a hospital. Ended up doing it at home, and it costs uh, doing it at home costs something like a tenth the price of what, of what Stanford yeah, was yeah. charging her. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you compare in cost? So when you're going to go yeah. off to sell this to insurance and others, how are you comparing in cost yeah. of the hospital experience? Yeah. How much of that you know impacts on the patient? Um, and yeah. you know how, how much of the transition from those more expensive hospital centers to the in home or these infusion centers is happening? How far are we in the journey? You know, in terms of moving stuff. Yeah. To the home now we have the hospital at home thing going on separately which is a you know early stage of this but 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 this is something which we know has been going on a while so where where are yeah. we in that journey and what's the cost like yeah yeah so the national infusion center association nica they've done a lot of research on this uh, and uh, you can go to their website and see some of the numbers for for remicade therapy at a hospital setting just for one therapy right one setting uh, at a hospital, the typical charge is over ten thousand uh, dollars. An infusion center like ours can do it for thirty to sixty percent less, so about four to five thousand dollars. That's very significant. When you start adding that up, uh, you know, over a year, uh, you know, those are significant savings. A typical infusion patient uh, can cost, uh, you know, the system between fifty to seventy thousand dollars on a yearly basis. If you do it in an infusion center like ours, uh, we can cut that in half. And because we're adding additional services, uh, you know, to our, uh, you know, offerings, looking at the person as a whole person and not just a condition uh, coming in for infusion, uh, we believe that there's additional savings that we can provide to the individual, uh, the patient, as well as the system as a whole. We know based on the research and uh, some of our own data that 40% of the total cost of care for an infusion patient is related to non-drug expenses, right? So it could be, uh, you know, other healthcare events uh, that that, uh, you know, chronic patient uh, is having during a year. 
by having a you know care coordination or offering a care coordination by offering a, you know medication management services by trying to close certain care gaps uh, by working with the payers we believe some of these offerings uh, is going to improve the outcomes uh, and and health of uh, the patient as well as lower uh, costs in the system as well as lower costs for for the individual patient obviously um and this you know we're buying in or, or playing into a trend uh, that is happening uh, to your last question how that there's a you know study out there saying three years from now over 50 percent of all uh referrals for infusion will go to uh retail-based infusion centers so it's starting to happen. Uh, the patient or the, the payers are putting a lot of pressure on um, hospital systems uh, to say, you got to find a way to do this for less uh, and move it, uh, you know, to more, uh, you know, retail based uh, centers uh, where uh, you can do it for less and where the patient experience is, is better. Right. So, so sounds like a good idea. Sounds like cheaper. You're presumably getting a decent uh, hearing once the, the health plans. You probably know from your old friends there to talk, talk about, talk to that about. Um, Give me a sense about the level of competition. I mean, who else is who, who else is doing this? Are there, you know, you think about things where there are retail centers, obviously dialysis comes to mind where you've got two giant companies who've been doing retail, you know, shopping mall centers yeah. for many, many years. Lots of questions yeah. about, about that. But uh, but I mean, That's where definitely. where is the infusion, you know, the outpatient infusion business compared to anything like that? How sort of mature is it? Or for an, for a company, uh, for, for a new company like yours, you know, is, is yeah. this pretty much green, green space? Yeah. There, there are, uh, you know, other ambulatory infusion centers on the market uh, that may offer, you know, uh, more conveniently located uh, centers, uh, but nobody is offering uh, the technology and the virtual care platform that we allow our patients to engage with uh, via our patient app. And nobody is really looking at the patient as a whole person. Uh, and so adding uh, some of these services uh, puts us in a very unique uh, competitive, uh, you know, situation. Um one of the uh, research studies and what we know is that a chronic patient has a higher prevalence of uh, uh, behavioral health and mental health uh, challenges. Uh, and we think uh, we can offer some of those services via the virtual care platform uh, that we are creating. Uh, it could even be uh, primary care offerings uh, that are more instantly available uh, to you because you're dealing with a, you know, a virtual uh, uh, care platform uh, that we will offer to our patients. And so, uh, you know, having access uh, to those uh, services, uh, we believe will provide a better experience uh, for the person uh, that we are treating, uh, will humanize uh, the infusion experience, uh, and will drive down costs and improve outcomes in the system. So you're essentially saying that you believe that your niche is going to be essentially taking over the entire patient experience. For that, uh, for, for for those chronic care patients, and uh, you know, working with their primary care doctors and their plans and also to close care gaps, and and I think this is you know this is part of a bigger trend, which is the idea that <clears throat> patients who receive a particular type of specialty care and a lot of it, often you know, this is true obviously in, in chemotherapy and oncology, you know, tend to end up by having all their care and everything floats around that, and if you're going to be receiving you know these touch points uh, rapidly, then then I suspect that's something that that you'll be doing. And you you can re re really start to you know to 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 hone on those patients, give them a much better and hopefully cheaper and, and more integrated care experience than they're probably receiving at the moment. So it's, so it sounds like a great idea. Now let's talk about, right. about where you are as a company because you're pretty new, right? You just you uh, you've got a uh, is it one or two centers up and running? Give me give me the lay of the land. How many centers up and running? How many people you've got on board? And uh, and and what the relationship with redesign has been. Yeah, so we, we are excited. Uh, we, we came out of stealth uh, last week. Uh, we announced uh, Optive Health. Uh, we announced our first clinic, uh, which is in Detroit, uh, Michigan. Uh, we are opening uh, that clinic. Uh, you know, we are open for business uh, right now. Uh, we'll have a grand opening event, uh, you know, August uh, 30th uh, in uh, the market. And then, uh, you know, we'll open a second clinic uh, in Detroit, uh, likely uh, towards the end of uh, this year. Uh, and uh, with uh, the seed money, uh, seven point five million, uh, we think uh, uh, there's uh, juice enough, uh, you know, to potentially look at a at an additional market uh, that we can add to our uh, roster, and uh, you know, potentially uh, set up a third clinic uh, before we go raise uh, for Series A. And tell me a bit about the economics of it. I mean, it's obviously early days. Um, when we've been looking at other, uh, 
and I go back to your Zoom health days, when you're looking at other sort of primary care clinics and maybe others, you've seen a lot of companies have lost a lot of money as they've yeah. expanded and built new stores over the course of time. I'm I'm thinking more about you know the folks like uh, you know, more medical and and, and, yeah. and Oak Street rather than specialty clinics. Where do where do you think the sort of where, where do you think the, uh, the 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 break even? How many clinics? How many markets yeah. did you be in? How how big do you have to be before you know this becomes a sort of a serious a serious business? And you know uh, yeah. what's the sort of what's the what's the when you were out raising the money? What was what was the timeline you were giving those investors as to, as to when you might start getting there? Yeah, so we've uh, been paying a lot of attention to uh, unit economics, uh, obviously, and uh, we are choosing a really lean. Uh, clinic, uh, you know, set up, uh, and that helps us uh, from a financial uh, perspective. We can turn one of these uh, clinics, uh, you know, cash flow positive, uh, you know, within uh, a very reasonable uh, time frame uh, that we shared with our in investors. Uh, and is, is reasonable believe- three months or five years? <laughs> uh, it's it's less than a year, and it is, okay. it's actually uh, you know, very. It's, it's very attractive uh, when you start looking at, uh, you know, how we could scale this business over time. Uh, we are going to prove out this uh, whole person model uh, over the next year to two years. Uh, then we're going to go raise, uh, you know, an A round and really have some proof points uh, that we can show our investors. This is what we are seeing uh, both from unit economics uh, as well as, uh, you know, patient outcome, uh, patient satisfaction. Uh, cost uh, metrics uh, in the system, uh, and we are very confident that that's going to give us, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, the ammunition uh, to go raise, uh, you know, f- an A round and and scale further. Uh, the infusion market, uh, and particularly the ambulatory infusion market, um, still has a lot of growth ahead of it, uh, and uh, there's ample of opportunity for. Uh, for us, uh, you know, to take advantage of uh, the opening uh, that we see in the market right now. And how how do you get patients? Obviously, uh, there are going to be a lot of I don't know if it's, there's any you're taking patients away uh, potentially from uh, from hospital systems. So you would is this via pairs? Is direct to consumer? What's the patient acquisition strategy? Yeah, so right now, uh, you know, our our primary focus is really independent, uh, you know, specialists, uh, neurologists, rheumatologists, GI, uh, you know, specialists that, uh, you know, uh, refer out uh, right now. Uh, and, and so we are knocking on their doors. We've had a business development person in market in Detroit over the past couple of months, and she's been welcomed, uh, you know, by uh, some of the specialists uh, there saying, uh, you know, we are, it's an underserved market. Uh, there's a need for an infusion uh, model uh, like ours uh, and so we're very uh, you know encouraged uh, by by the uh, uh, initial uh, feedback uh, that we're getting in the market we also think uh, that we could be a partner to uh, you know health systems uh, they're getting a lot of pressure as mentioned uh, by payers uh, to find new ways or innovative uh, 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 ways to do infusion. Uh, we know how to set up retail-based uh, infusion with technology in mind and actually care for the whole chronic person uh, that we are serving. And we think that that could be a real uh, uh, offering uh, for healthcare systems, particularly as they are moving into more value-based care models uh, with their payers, uh, where we could nest under their uh, you know, value-based contracts uh, and uh, do a portion of that really well for them. But or with actually, them. actually even save them some money if we can find some health systems somewhere that care about saving money. That debate will go on <laughs> for a while. All right, All right. Fa- fantastic. So I've been talking with Torben Nielsen. He's the CEO of Optive Health. It is a newcomer, as we mentioned, in the uh, in the world of uh, uh, retail infusion clinics. Torben, uh, good luck with the whole thing, though, with, the, with the rollout, with the opening the new clinics and uh, we'll check in on you as this progresses yeah this, this sounds great uh, matthew thanks for having me on and i uh, look forward to uh, staying in touch take care